piece of essays uh, in a book, The Burnout Society, uh, included uh, included one of the one of the essays called uh, uh, Society of Exhibitions, and uh, Han uh, places particular emphasis on the exhibition nature of the contemporary modus vivendi. Uh, on today's uh, society way of uh, functioning and, and uh, thinking. Um, ah. Well, this essay actually doesn't deal specifically uh, uh, into art exhibitions. It can serve as a significant source of inspiration for those of us who are studying this complex medium. If Walter Benjamin uh, was examining uh, how the value of objects of cult arises from their experience rather than their exposition or exhibition, Han points out that in the society of positivity, this is how he calls the, the current society, which is uh, today's society for him, things are transformed into commodities. And that is why they must be exhibited in order to exist at all. Their cult value is replaced by a value derived from their exhibition. And describes the aestheticization of today's visual communication in a penetrating manner and compares its superficiality uh, to horror vacuum and vehicle. Visual, visual communication today operates as infection reaction or reflex. It lacks any aesthetic reflection. Its aesthetization ultimately becomes anesthetic. It seems that prolonged observation is not necessary for the aesthetic judgment alone. Images filled with exhibition value exhibit no complexity. They lack the root ruggedness, what would stimulate reflection, investigation and thought. Complexity slows down communication. Anesthetic hypercommunication reduces complexity in the interest of acceleration. It is inherently faster than the communication of meaning. Meaning is slow. It stands in the way of accelerated cycle of information and communication. Transparency therefore goes hand in hand with the emptiness of meaning. The cause of information and communication expansion is horror vacuum, end of quote. By studying the history of exhibition, we can understand how this phenomenon evolved and how, during the second half of the 20th century, it gradually became more and more important how the work of art is presented or exhibited than how it is inherently created. In our research of the history of exhibition practices in post-war Czechoslovakia, which we conducted at the Research Center of the Academy of Fine Arts in Prague together with Dagmar Svatoshova and Terezia Nekvindova, we became aware of how the exhibition as a medium gradually gained its status. It was only in the second half of the 1960s that exhibitions began to be documented more frequently as a whole which is now a common practice. In today's flood of Instagram photo reports from exhibitions, it is actually hard to imagine that no one used to document them. We also examined the evolution of the exhibition medium during the 1990s, including the establishment of curatorial practices and the transformation of gallery infrastructure and the art market. Over time, we gradually learned how the exhibitions were produced, how art was cultivated and socialized through it. We also began to investigate the nature of exhibition medium in our region and to discovered that under the conditions of state socialism, this medium uh, gave rise to various original forms. We need to explore the intricate specifics of exhibition featuring official art under, under communist uh, ideology, diplomatic exhibitions from the former Eastern Bloc and their colonizing, uh, colonizing uh, ambitions. 
Additionally, we should investigate various forms of self-managed exhibition projects that emerge within alternative circles, including apartment exhibitions, exhibitions held in non-gallery spaces, uh, and script exhibitions within gallery spaces behind the closed doors. And to many other specific ways of circumventing censorship, uh, often leading to complex and sometimes humorous situations. We should also focus more our attention on exhibitions that were forbidden and never realized. The res re resilience and creativity of uh, the artist community, which operated in the alternative sphere and formed uh, what was referred as uh, the second culture, resulted in creation of numerous original forms of exhibiting, largely unknown in the West, Western context. Um, <clears throat> this is clearly demonstrated, for instance, by the online archive parallel chronologies collection of exhibitions in Eastern Europe from 1950 to 1989, which was established in 2009, and it is maintained by Transit uh, Hungary, and I'm so glad that Zsuzsa is here, uh, who is one of the, uh, uh, next to Dora Hedy, one of the, the important founders of this uh, amazing uh, online archive. There we can explore various experimental exhibitions in the countries such as Hungary, Poland, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, Belarus, Czechoslovakia, Croatia, Serbia, Romania, and German Democratic Republic, allowing for the comparison. Comparison is perhaps the moment when we can pause and redirect our attention to from what has been done to what needs to be done. Although research in the field of exhibition histories of the former Eastern Bloc has deepened significantly in the last decade, I believe we still lack international comparisons and synthesis that would reveal the specifics of our region and advance this new discipline of art history in a global context. As Matthew Rampley recently claimed in his text, The Search for Alternatives, Horizontal Art History, 15 years later, published in the Notebook for Art Theory and Related Zone, and here I quote, if it is needed, uh, indeed uh, the case, as Piotrowski contended, that the view from the periphery of East Central Europe affords an understanding not available to the center itself. Work remains to be done on producing such a contra-narrative rather than merely declaiming it in the abstract. This might involve, for example, identification of conceptual and epistemic resources that might be able to challenge the dominance of North Atlantic art history and jettisoning the dead hand of positivism and of thought. When I introduced the Prague conference, the exhibition as medium in the in the blog, uh, which took place a year ago as part of the project resonances uh, at the Academy of Fine Arts in Prague, I raised several issues. While some of these uh, problems or questions were addressed during the discussions, others still remain unresolved. For me. Um, it remains crucial to analyze how exhibition <laughs> often developed under improvised condition with the, within the second public sphere can contend with professionally curated and institutionally supported exhibitions representing the official culture of the former East or Western exhibition practice. In my view, we continue to observe significant disparities within the context of global art history. Furthermore, this issue impacts the international recognition of artists uh, coming from the former Eastern Bloc, among other factors. Um, it is widely known that artists' careers are often assessed uh, based on the list of exhibitions and institutions where they have presented their work. And in this field, there's still a need for extensive contextualization and comparative interpretation, in my opinion. 
Another area where there is still much work to be done is in understanding the mechanics of exhibition operations. While writing our book, uh, Exhibition as Medium, Czech Art 1957 to 1999, we came to realize how little we know about the functioning of the art scene itself during the era of state socialism. To comprehend why exhibitions took the form they did, we must delve into the processes of gallery organization, financing, and decision making. Exhibitions always occupy a central position within complex relationships involving artists, creators, critics, political ideologues, bureaucrats, economists, and viewers. Consequently, they represent a historically conditioned format for presenting art, creating a unique context for encountering the, the art form. Without this context, we cannot fully understand or interpret it. I believe that not enough attention has been paid to these specific conditions in the former Eastern Bloc. It could be also inspiring for our contemporary negotiations on the culture support and operation. For example, the gallery system in Czechoslovakia during the second half of the 1960s could be considered a utopian model. Selected galleries received state support, but were operated by groups of artists centered around elected theoreticians from the Association of Czechoslovak Artists. Another potential area for further research uh, could be um, the topic of art exhibition openings. I conducted a case study on their, on their evolution in Czechoslovakia from 1940s to the 1990s. And in my view, we can glean valuable insight in the evolving role of exhibitions in society through this avenue of uh, inquiry. I am also curious about what insights we can gain from a uh, detailed analysis of the evolving, evolving aesthetics of exhibition spaces. When we examine um, photographs of exhibition installations from the 1960s or 70s, we discover several surprising elements in these type of spaces, whether it's floor decoration, carpets, or even the curtains. I believe it would be equally productive to compare alternative exhibition spaces on both sides of the Iron Curtain, highlighting their differences and examining the role uh, played by the political backdrop uh, of their evolution. There's no doubt that in modern times, exhibition, um, exhibitions have become the primary medium for the perception legitimization, and institutionalization of finance. They embody what Paul O'Neill has termed cultural constellations. These unique events serve as intersections for aesthetic, social, political, and economic forces within specific periods and geographic regions. While the future may bring forth new and exciting concepts and methodologies, or compel us to address the escalating climate crisis and intensifying social and political violence, I hold the view that the methodology of exhibition histories will endure as a fundamental tool in the field of art history throughout the 21st century. To conclude, I want to stress our responsibility to conduct further research into the specific conditions and outcomes of socialist exhibition histories, to compare artistic operations and forms across different countries within the bloc and with the global North and South. It is essential for us to transition from being local specialists to regional specialists. I believe that ongoing series of conferences and inspiring research conducted by scholars like Piotr Piotrowski, Maya and Raven Fox, Clara Ken Welsh, Edith Andrei, Jerome Bazan, or Christian Nile, to name just few, must continue. Thank you.